Hey guys, today I'm going to show you the quick and easy process of installing some shutoff valves on all of the plumbing in your RV, so stick around. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing the plumbing job in here. I started. I don't need you pushing on my butt. Do it again. I'm not helping it. <laughs> hey, get out of here. Hey guys, welcome back to Why Wait. Today is going to be a simple, quick, easy video about installing some shutoff valves on all of your water lines that go to your fixtures inside your RV. Now, this is kind of a easy process. It's not too much of a job. You only need a few tools. It shouldn't actually take too long, but once you have these things installed, it just makes life so much easier. If you ever have a problem going to your toilet or some of your fixtures and you need to work on something, as it stands now, you have to shut off the water to the whole rig to work on anything. And that's kind of our problem right now as well. Now, some RV companies that are building these campers now have sort of smartened up to this and are actually pre-installing these on all the water lines going to the fixtures as it, as it is, which is a really great idea. Now we have a 2018 Grand Design Solitude and our camper does not have any shutoff valves on any of the water lines going to the toilets, faucets, washer dryer, anything like that. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna hook these up to our hot and cold lines going to all of our fixtures. Again, pretty simple process. I'm just gonna take you through it, show you what you need, show you how to do it. So let's go hit it. Okay, so some of the items you're going to need. So the first thing are these little ball valve shutoffs right here. And this is a half inch fitting. Most RV plumbing is going to be a half inch PEX plumbing. You could have three quarter inch in there. Just check your plumbing before you go and buy these. I purchased nine of these. I'm going to do the hot and cold water lines from my shower, my bathroom sink, my kitchen sink, my washing machine, and the toilet. Now, most of these water lines should be easily accessible from underneath the cabinets and behind the toilet. Now for the shower, I will be installing these in the basement. Now I do have access behind my shower to get to where the water lines go in for the hot and cold for my shower, but I really can't work in the small area inside the wall where I would have to install these. So I'm just gonna install them a little bit lower down in the basement, that's just fine. And the same thing with my onboard washer machine. They do provide you with some shutoffs, but they're in my closet and you cannot get your hand in there to shut them off if you needed if you needed to shut it off or if you had a problem. So I will also be installing these for my washing machine down inside my basement. Okay guys, there's only a few tools you need to complete this project or really just two good tools to keep on hand. Whether you do this project or not, these two tools you should always have as part of your RV kit. And the first one are some PEX cutters. Now this is a little bit more advanced. These cutters will also cut PVC, but I'll put a link down below to a little bit cheaper brand or a little bit of a cheaper style, I guess I should say, that they're only mainly just gonna cut PEX and won't cut PVC. Now these will cut both right here. That's gonna be a necessary tool if you ever have to do a plumbing project. Now the other tool you wanna have is a PEX crimping tool. And I've talked about this before. This is from a company called iWIS. And this is an essential item. This is on our 20 essential items to have for any RVers. And I'll put a link up to that video right here. If you haven't seen that, go check that out. It's a list about 20 essential RV items, whether you're a beginner, a full timer, the kind of items that are really gonna help you out in a jam. And what these are for is these are what is necessary to crimp down on the shark bite clamps I'm about to show you in a minute. And here are the clamps I was just talking about that work with that cinch tool. These are from Sharkbite. These are half inch PEX clamps. They come in three quarter inch. I think they even go up to an inch. Most of your standard RV plumbing should just be a half inch. And again, everything we, you see here today that I'm talking about, I'll have links to it all down below in Amazon. If you can't get on Amazon or if you just like to go to Lowe's or Home Depot, you can find all of this stuff in their plumbing section. Okay, I thought I'd start off in here. This is a plumbing underneath my sink in my bathroom. You can see we have the hot water line and a cold water line. You're gonna to wanna to install a shutoff on both of those. Now, I have two kinds of PEX in my camper. This is the soft PEX hosing, which isn't used in too many places. And you're gonna see other places like underneath my kitchen sink, 
behind the toilet where we have the hard half inch pecs. Now it doesn't matter if it's soft or hard, you can use this on any of it. You can also use this on the reinforced vinyl PVC piping that you may see. It's a clear, it looks almost like a soft pex. It's gonna be clear, but it's a little bit thicker diameter on the outside, it's a little bit harder. And I do have some of that under my kitchen sink as well. Now this is a very simple process. And most of the time, what you can usually sometimes do is just take your cutters and just make one cut right in here because there's going to be usually enough slack in the pipe going down that you can pull that pipe up to fit your fitting in here. If not, you're going to have to make two cuts, make a cut and then make another cut so that you can fit this into the space. So sometimes you have to take about an inch or so of piping out of the way so you can replace it with this ball valve. Again, this is going to be a very simple process. Just don't forget the first step you wanna do is go outside of the camper, go and shut your water off to the main water line coming in. It's gonna shut all the water off to your camper, obviously going everywhere, but that way you can do this project without making a mess. And that's why we're doing this project so we can start to do things like this and shut off each fixture at a time without having to shut off water to the whole camper like we have to do now. Now you can also go ahead and open your low point drains if you want to, to try to free up any water that may be standing in the pipes. Sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't. And after you shut your water off before you go cutting the pipe, I would also recommend running all the water that goes to the fixture to empty out the lines. So as you can see, the first thing I'm gonna do here is just make my single cut. And that looks pretty good right about there. Now, as I was talking earlier, sometimes you have enough slack where you can just make one cut. With this water line right here, I don't have enough to slack to pull it up, as you can see, so I'm gonna have to make two cuts. And just gonna take another little snip, just go ahead and kind of measure how much you need to cut out. I took about a half inch out of it right here, as you can see. And then let me just test it, pop that in there, it has a good fit. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get my clamps. Now here's my half inch clamp right here for the half inch pipe. It does look like it's gonna be a little tight on this soft pex versus the hard pex though. But I got the clamp on, it was extremely tight. Now this is a half inch pex, and this is a half inch clamp, which is usually very compatible, at least on the half inch hard pex. On this half inch soft pex, it's a little bit thicker, and I really had to get some needle nose pliers to bend this and squeeze this soft pex to fit inside this clamp. Now, I got a solution for that, and I'll tell you about it here in a minute. Okay, just a little tip or something I found out. Now this is my first time working with the soft pecs. I've done plumbing jobs around the RV before with the half inch hard pecs. And these half inch clamps work just great on that hard pecs. But the soft pecs down here seems to be just a little bit thicker and I'm having a heck of a time getting this half inch fitting over it. Now I did take some needle nose pliers and I kind of squeezed the end of the tube and kept working it, softening it up and I finally pulled it on and got it on. Now I do carry a variety of fittings. I carry these three quarter inch PEX fittings, just in case. Those are gonna be too big. You're not gonna be able to use that because when you use the crimpers, they only go so far and that's it. They do make five eighths inch size clamps. Now I do think you're not gonna usually find these in most box stores like Lowe's and stuff, but they do have them on Amazon. And I'm gonna put a link for those down below. I'm gonna get me a pack myself because I think the five eighths inch would be just the perfect size to use if you're messing around with these soft pecs like I am right now. I'm gonna go ahead and try to finish this job out using this half inch and it's just gonna be really difficult to get it on. It's really gonna fight me, but just something to keep in mind, a little tip. But again, I've had no problem using the half inch fitting with the half inch hard pecs. It's just this soft pecs, the first time I've really messed with it with these clamps and it's given me a little bit of a fit. So something to keep in mind, check that out. It's always good to have a wide variety of fittings. And I will tell you one more thing. Sometimes I do open a bag of these up and they're sometimes, even though they're supposed to all be half inch, uh, the size can really vary. Sometimes I'll get one that's a little bit too small. I'll get one that's actually a bit bigger than most of them. So just keep that in mind as well. Okay, the clamp is on. So let's just slide our shutoff valve in here. Should be a little tension, but not too much. Now you do want to leave about a one eighth inch space in between here when you put these clamps on. Let's get our tool on here. And that'll automatically release once it's crimped it all the way down. You'll feel it, you'll know it. 
that's nice and secure there now. Of course, you'll never know until we fire the water up and test it. And we'll do that and we'll check it out. Now, all I'm doing here is taking some needle nose pliers and I'm just bending the tip of this soft PEX a little bit, making it a little bit more pliable so I can slip that PEX clamp on. Like I said, it's a little bit tight, but I think we're gonna get it on, no problem. Okay. As you can see, we really had to fight and squeeze to get that on there. Okay, we'll just pop this part on right here, no problem. Clamp it down, everything's looking good, no issues. Again, I would definitely recommend for this soft pex going one step up from the half inch to these 5 eighths inch clamps right here. I think that's just going to fit better on this soft pex. Again, the half inch clamps, uh, no issues with the hard pex. We have the water running up here. Everything looks good down here. I think I'm going to wait until I get those 5 eighths inch fittings to do my hot water line down here on this soft pex but I'm gonna go ahead and do my other uh, fixtures. And I would say the toilet's the most important one because it's the one that's probably most likely to have leaks um, around the base. You may wanna replace the toilet. And more than anything, on my monthly maintenance, I am always putting some plumber's grease down around the ball valve in my toilet to keep it lubed up so that the flapper always opens nice and easy. And you have to shut the water off to do that. So I'm actually sick of going outside all the time to shut the water off, to put the plumber's grease inside there. Now I can just shut the water off right here in the bathroom, do what I gotta do, and turn it back on. Okay, so our toilet, we're gonna make one cut, put our valve in, we're gonna take a marker, measure where we need to make our second cut, make our second cut, take about a half inch of pipe out. We're gonna slip both of these PEX crimps on each end, and they go on nice and easy in the hard PEX. Slide the valve right in, just as you see right here and get it adjusted where you want it. Make sure there's room for the handle. And then we're going to cinch down the bottom one, cinch down the top one, and that's it. We will be all set. Doesn't take long at all. Okay, looks good. Just always make sure there's room for your handle to rotate as well. As you can see, I just did the toilet. That one took me about two minutes versus messing around with that soft pex. So I just wanted to show you how quick it can actually go when the clamps, uh, well, when they do what they're supposed to do. So that was a cool breeze. That took two seconds. Let's go knock out the rest. So I went ahead and did the kitchen sink here. I just want to show you that real quick. We have the reinforced vinyl tubing here because I have it going to a water filter under my kitchen sink. And then the red line is obviously my hot water. Now make sure you kind of always stagger the two valves a little bit away from each other so they both have room to rotate and turn on and off if you're doing two next to each other like this. And we're good to go. Okay, we're gonna go turn this water back on to the camper, check everything, make sure we don't have any leaks, and that should be it. We should be golden, guys. And this is just really a safety precaution. It's a nice little project to do when you have some time. It's not necessary, but it will make some other projects a little bit easier, and it can really save you in a pinch sometimes. So, I'm gonna turn this water back on. I'm gonna go check everything out. As always, thanks for stopping by, checking us out, and get out there, start your full-time adventure, because why wait? See you guys next time.